Netaji certainly was the first head of state, the first prime minister of united, undivided India. The important factor is united, undivided. She missed out the most critical factor. The first prime minister of divided dominion of India was certainly Mr. Nehru. There are many, many leaders cutting across political parties who fall short of the concept of India that Netaji had envisioned. Shubhash Chandra Bose is the only leader to date who could unite all communities as Bharatiyas. This Bharatiya concept, unfortunately, Netaji would have been dismayed seeing the present situation in our country, the division among communities. And in fact, I completely hold the political leadership of our country responsible for this communal feeling when politics enters the fray, when political leadership enters the game, the communal feeling begins. Communalism cannot counter communalism. But today, unfortunately, that is the practice. So we are sitting on a time bomb. We had a two-nation theory way back in 1947 that today we have a four-nation theory. And I would say the political fraternity and leadership, they are responsible for this four-nation theory divide. What do we find today? Politicians starting election campaign. They are being projected on television. They are entering a temple. They are putting a tilak. Why do we need to politicize our great epics? Why do you need to put a picture of Ram? Why do we need to shout Jai Sri Ram slogan as a war cry for electioneering? That today, if Netaji would have been alive, I think he would have been a very unhappy person. It is not fair or not right at all to use Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose as a political tool to counter Nehru, Mahatma Gandhi, or any other political stalwarts of that era. Somehow BJP has caught hold of Dr. Shama Prashad Mukherjee that he is the founder. I feel the founder of BJP is Lal Krishna Advani ji and Atal Vyari Bajpayee ji. He was a communal person. He opposed both Sarad Bose and Netaji's ideology of inclusive India. Doing polarization, there may be a win for a political party, but the nation loses. Or do you want to unite the people and make the nation win? Hello and welcome to HD's ongoing talk show, The Interview, and our special segment, Elections 2024, The Big Picture. Film star turned politician Kangna Ranaut courts controversy. But this time around, she messed up big time. She tread slippery ground and said India's first prime minister was Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose. Hell broke loose and the knives were out. It was none other than one of Netaji's own who stepped in to set the record straight. Disturbed and a trifle upset, at distortion of historical facts, Netaji's grand nephew, Chandra Kumar Bose, came out strongly. That apart, he also spoke about today's India being contrary to what Netaji had wanted independent India to be. For the uninitiated, Chandra Kumar Bose had joined the BJP and contested against Mamata Banerjee in the assembly elections in 2016. He later quit the BJP because to quote him, it was becoming impossible, unquote. We have Chandra Kumar Bose here with us to talk about Kangana Ranaut, Mamta Banerjee, the BJP and much more. Chandra Kumar Bose, as he turns the pages of history in this edition of Elections 2024, 
the big picture. Welcome to the show, Mr. Chandra Kumar Bose, and thank you for being Arshan. here with us. Thank you. Pleasure. Let me begin with Kangana Ranaut. What do you make of her statement? Is it pure ignorance or do you think it is political strategy? As far as her statement on the liberator of India, Netaji Shubhash Chandra Bose is concerned, it's incomplete. Netaji certainly was the first head of state, the first prime minister of united, undivided India. The important factor is united, undivided. She missed out the most critical factor in describing Netaji Shubhash Chandra Bose as the first prime minister of undivided united India. He also happens to be the last prime minister of undivided united India. So I think you need to study Netaji's life and times. You need to study his books, which are written by him. I would request not only Kangana, all persons who are interested to know more about Netaji is to study his own writings, to understand Netaji's concept of India, Netaji's ideology of a united India, and Netaji, what he, his vision for India. So, would you say that it was ignorance or would you put it to a clever political strategy on her part? Well, Kangana has entered the political fray. Any citizen of our country can contribute, can join politics. So did I. Which we will come to. Okay. All are welcome to join politics and contribute. But one should not distort history for own political mileage or mileage of their political party and masters. You see, the freedom movement, in my opinion, started way back in 1857 with the Sepoy uprising of Mangal Pandey. Then there were many who sacrificed their lives. Shahid Bhagat Singh, to name a few, Rajguru, Khudiram Bose, they all did not hesitate to go to the gallows for the freedom of our nation. Then we had Mahatma Gandhi's nonviolent movement, which also had its own impact. But the final onslaught on the British power was none other than the Battle of the Indian National Army and the subsequent INA trials, which were held at the Red Fort in early 1946, completely destroyed the loyalty and allegiance of the British forces to the British High Command. And that was primarily the seminal reason why Britain relinquished India. So now, you know, the first prime minister of divided dominion of India was certainly Mr. Nehru. So I think in order to say that uh, Shubhash Bose was the first prime minister and not completing your sentence of undivided India, it gives somehow a message that you are trying to challenge the first prime minister of divided dominion of India. There are two completely separate issues and separate matters. You know, you just said that to talk about Netaji, one must first understand his ideology. Point well taken. In this context, do you think that Kangana Renaut falls terribly short. It is unfair to, uh, you know, kind of uh, tell her that she falls short. There are many, many leaders cutting across political parties who fall short of the concept of India that Netaji had envisioned. If you really want to understand and admire Shubhash Chandra Bose, you must understand his inclusive secular ideology. According to me, Shubhash Chandra Bose 
is the only leader to date who could unite all communities as Bharatiyas. This Bharatiya concept, unfortunately, as a nation, we have failed. The leadership and political fraternity, we have miserably failed in order to unite all communities. You know, when you speak of Bharatiyata, in one sense, the BJP government naming or renaming India as Bharat, do you think that is a step in that direction? I think uh, in our constitution, it is very clearly stated that India, that is Bharat. So there is no difference between Bharat and India. India, that is Bharat, it is very clearly stated. So whether you address our nation as Bharat or India, makes no difference but it would make a difference if we implement the concept of being a Bharatiya that we are unfortunately we have failed against that backdrop looking at today's India wouldn't Netaji be turning in his grave yes Netaji would have been dismayed seeing the present situation in our country the division among communities and in fact, I completely hold the political leadership of our country responsible for this communal feeling when politics enters the fray, when political leadership enters the game, the communal feeling begins. Communalism cannot counter communalism. But today, unfortunately, that is the practice. So we are sitting on a time bomb. We had a two nation theory way back in 1947. What I find when I talk to common people, when I talk to people who are concerned about India, they feel that today we have a four nation theory. Just explain this four nation theory to me. You see, North of India has their own feeling, has their own ways, their own attitude. I don't want to get into details, but you know what I'm talking about. South India feels differently. They don't feel they belong to the rest of our country. Eastern India has its own feelings and attitude. And Western India also goes on its own path. Where is the unity? And I would say the political fraternity and leadership, they are responsible for this for nation theory divide and i think the only path to save this nation from further disintegration is to implement netaji's inclusive ideology what do we find today politicians starting election campaign they are being projected on television they are entering a temple they are putting a tilak and the whole day they are going around with the tilak this does not speak much of communal harmony. Your faith is your personal matter. Don't mix it up with public life. Netaji was, why was he different? How did he stand out as a leader? Because he refused to use religious symbols for political purposes. Netaji was very, very spiritual. He was a, a staunch, devout Hindu. He used to visit the Kali temple at Dakineshwar Mandir, but that was a personal matter. The moment he came into the open, moment he addressed the public, he had no religion. So unless we follow this ideology, India would not stay united. And the four nation theory may not be tomorrow, but in the years to come, India will break up. While we talk about Netaji being dismayed, and I'm using a mild word, dismayed at today's India. This takes me back to the painting where he was shown frowning. Well, an artist, a uh, friend of mine, uh, she had painted uh, a portrait. Uh, she said that uh, I have done this and I would like to show it to you. So I went to see the Netaji's portrait that she had drawn. I was shocked to see the expression 
on the portrait on Netaji's face. You see, Netaji was uh, rather photogenic, but this portrait gave me a shock that there was a frown on Netaji's face. In spite of hardships, in spite of the British imperialist power practically torturing him in Mandalay Jail, in, in Alipur Central Jail in Kolkata, he always had a smile on his face. But this portrait gave a different uh, picture altogether. So I asked uh, the artist that why is Netaji having this expression, a frown on his face? So she gave me a very apt reply, I thought. Netaji's portrait reflects the current political, social, and economic situation of our country. And that is why he is, he has a frown. He's so disgusted with the scenario of present day India. This is the expression he would have. So I, I understood what she tried to portray and project. And I think she was right that today, if Netaji would have been alive, I think he would have been a very unhappy person. Talking of vote bank politics, would you say that Kangana Ranaut's statement, and I keep coming back to that, if it was deliberate, seems an attempt to pitch Jawaharlal Nehru versus Bose and Mahatma Gandhi versus Subhash Chandra Bose? It's very unfortunate that uh, for current day politics, we have to bring stalwarts into the picture. There was a very strong bonding between Mahatma Gandhi and Subhash Chandra Bose. There were differences of opinion. Subhash Chandra Bose did not agree with Mahatma Gandhi that nonviolence can bring about freedom. An armed struggle was necessary, Subhash thought, but that did not prevent them to have a very good relationship. Similarly, Subhash Chandra Bose had a very good understanding with Mr. Nehru. There were differences. Of course, there would be differences. There are, there was jealousy among colleagues. Both of them, their ideology was similar. So one must understand history. It is not fair or not right at all to use Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose as a political tool to counter Nehru, Mahatma Gandhi or any other political stalwarts of that era. I think it's in very bad taste to do it. We learn through our mistakes and I'm sure Kangana would learn. In the same strain, what would you then say about the BJP constantly downgrading and degrading Jawaharlal Nehru? I think it is a failing of any political party that they have to always utilize or bring forward stalwarts of the freedom movement. They may have made mistakes. I think if we insult such stalwarts, it is demeaning yourself and demeaning and insulting your own party and your own efforts. So I think we should leave them alone. They have contributed. They might have made mistakes. So I think a time has come in 21st century India. We should move on. What is the point of criticizing people who have fought for India's freedom? It is for them that India is free today. You said one must move on. Point well taken. But the BJP seems to be constantly in a rewind mode. I wouldn't like to do politics today, although I've been in politics. But I would like to say that if you have nothing to talk about your contribution, the human tendency is to be critical of others. But when we can do introspection, and if we can criticize our own, I think that's where you know we would look as a mature nation and as a mature politician to take the nation forward. But we are yet to achieve that. Because I think this hangover uh, that uh, the Congress fought for freedom movement, Congress was part of the freedom movement, 
all stalwarts were part of that Congress movement. I think that gives a complex to others. And that is why this question keeps rising. You see, Shubhash Chandra Bose has written very clearly in his Indian struggle that for the freedom movement, nothing can be expected from the Hindu Mahasabha nor the Muslim League. So there are people who fail to contribute for the freedom movement. So certainly they would be critical of people who actually positively contributed for the freedom struggle. So maybe that is one of the reasons why they are constantly harping on this issue at, you know, the Congress made a lot of mistakes. Congress did make a mistake. We should have never partitioned the country. Congress should have never agreed to partition of India. If Netaji would have come back in 1947, and if he would have remained the first prime minister of India, then the country would have continued being undivided, united India in 1947. And in 1947, from the ramparts of the Red Fort, United India's flag would have been hoisted. While on the BJP, you joined the party and then quit. And to quote you, it was becoming impossible for me. Take me through that. Well, I was very impressed by Narendra Modi ji. I'll be very honest. I had no intention of joining BJP. I was planning to form my own political party in 2015-16. Azad in party, completely based on Netaji's inclusive secular ideology. But then when while speaking to Narendra Modi and others, they suggested that you join BJP and you use BJP platform to spread Netaji's ideology. So then I was given the assurance that a morcha would be formed, Azad in morcha. And I would take, you know, leadership of that morcha and I would go around the country preaching and spreading Netaji's inclusive ideology. But that never happened. What about your saying it was becoming impossible for me? My conscience didn't permit to campaign for BJP, to spread BJP's ideology. It was contradictory to my beliefs and my you know, conviction. Because my politics is completely based on the Bose brothers' concept of politics, both Sarat Chandra Bose and Shubhash Chandra Bose, communal harmony, no Hindu Muslim issue, no bringing religion into politics. So I think I did probably misunderstand when I was told that I could freely do politics using BJP platform, preaching Shubhash Bose and Sarat Bose's ideology. Azadin Morcha was never formed, by the way. So I thought I would get an opportunity to go to parliament to raise issues of Bengal. Bengal has always been neglected, unfortunately. Bengal has suffered over the years. Yet you contested against Mamata Banerjee in the assembly elections. So I requested the party leadership that first time, give me a seat where I can win. They had a lot of seats. They said, no, 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 you will win. So I said, I think that is a tall order because in 2016, BJP had no organization, even in Bengal. And to contest and to defeat Bamata Banerjee in her home turf, I think would be very tough. Well, I increased the vote share. I, obviously, I could not win. Talking about West Bengal, do you think this is the West Bengal? which Netaji would have liked to see. The state is gripped in political violence, and so also the nation. First of all, if the Bose brothers had their way, Bengal would have remained united. Communal leaders like Shama Prasad Mukherjee, who was in the Hindu Mahasabha, who, was, who is known as the founder of BJP, who was a scholar in his own right, but politically he failed. But somehow BJP has caught hold of Dr. Shama Prashad Mukherjee that he is the founder. I feel the founder of BJP is Lal Krishna Advani ji and 
अटल बिहारी वाजपेयी जी श्यामा प्रसाद मुखर्जी वॉज अ डिवाइडर ऑफ बेंगाल ही वॉज अ कॉम्यूनल पर्सन ही अपोज बोथ शरद बोस एंड नेताजी आइडियोलॉजी ऑफ इंक्लूसिव इंडिया पोलिटिकल वायलेंस पोलिटिकल वायलेंस is again entirely the fault of the political leadership cutting across all political parties in bengal all political parties unfortunately have encouraged and practiced political violence to get mileage this must stop before i wrap up let me ask you given your political insights what do you think or what do you make of the bjp slogan of 400 plus seats this time and about mamta banerji looking for an other term in the forthcoming assembly elections well first of all the strategy adopted by political parties to win elections is wrong it is polarization for polarization a political party may win doing polarization there may be a win for a political party but the nation loses the nation is defeated so do you want to defeat the nation and make a political party win through polarization or do you want to unite the people and make the nation win today what is known as andha bhats blind voters or blind supporters they really don't know why they are supporting you it is very unfortunate but why do we politicize ram why do we need to politicize our great epics why do you need to put a picture of ram why do we need to shout jai shri ram slogan as a war cry for electionary these concepts take india back to the dark ages to the stone ages politically we are still in the dark ages of history what about the 400 plus seats slogan that the bjp claims this time they would win well that's muscle power and confidence bjp's overconfidence says that 400 why not 500 plus why leave 100 seats for somebody else we started this program on netaji's ideology so i will end in the same strain so let me ask you between non violence and armed struggle which of these would you or do you subscribe to both the movements the revolutionary armed struggle the non violent movement of mahatma gandhi and the congress and the final thrust of the indian national army this three pronged approach was responsible for freedom of our country but india is free today we need to have world peace today in 21st century i think we need to have peaceful discussions we can always resolve issues through a dialogue it wasn't possible in the british era we had to boot them out we had to fight them with the with the sword with the gun with bullets india is free today but in today's free india i think the non violent approach i think is a better approach mr chandra kumar bos thank you very much thank you for your time and thank you for being here with us and taking us through the pages of history thank you jai hind